Most of the models that we've done so far have been direct variation models where when one value goes up, the other value also goes up, and when one value goes down, the other value also goes down. Inverse variation models are the opposite of that. With an inverse variation, when one value increases, the other decreases. Uh, for instance, if we have, um, if we do just a quick xy table of a uh, basic inverse function, you might see something like uh, as when x is 2, y is 2, but when x is 1, y is 4, and when x is 4, y is 1. So as we plot something like this, we end up with a, just a sort of a quick and dirty sketch here. We see that if x is 1, y is 4, when x is 2, y is 2, and when x is 4, y is 1. You can see we get sort of this curve because what we end, the, the function itself looks like y equals something, um, usually the, we use k for constant proportionality, over x. So as x gets bigger, y, gets, y ends up having a single number that's divided by a progressively bigger and bigger number. So y gets smaller. If x is a little number, then whatever this constant is, maybe it's, say, 2. If, we have, um, if y equals 2 over x, you can see that if x is 1, then y is 2 over 1, that's 2. If x is 4, then y is 2 divided by 4, so it's only a half. So as x increases, y decreases, and vice versa. We had a student call in a question that was similar to this, and I'm going to use it as sort of a, an example here. So let's call that up real quick so we can review it. His name was Kingston. And Kingston says that uh, he's working with inverse variations, and he needs to find a constant of variation by looking at two points. An example of one of the problems is like this. He said the point is 4, 1, and it's from a model for inverse variation, and he needs to find the constant of variation. So since our, our model, our, uh, our inverse variation model, looks like y equals k over x, what we need to do to find that constant of variation, that k, is to substitute in the x and y he's given. So he's given a point 4, 1, which is what right here or so on our graph. So we just substitute in that y and that x, and we get 1 equals k over 4. And then we just solve for k. We multiply both sides by 4. And we get 4 equals k. So for the first, uh, first answer there, Kingston, your constant proportionality k is 4. And then we can actually graph this function because now that we know the constant proportionality we can write out the actual function and we get y equals 4 over x. So then we just need to plot a few points. We'll do our xy table. So if y equals 4 over x then if x is 1, y is 4 over 1, so that's 4. If x is 2, y is 4 over 2, so that's a half. No, I'm sorry, that's 2. If x is 4, y is 4 over 4, so that's 1. So if we plot those points real quick, when x is 1, y is 4, 2 and 2, and 4 and 1, that was something we already had. Um, and then if we went on up to 8, if x is 8, y is 4 eighths, or a half. So we have a point clear out here, and then we'd have the alternate one that would be up here. So when we connect those lines, you know, getting a curve that looks a little like this. And we can see that similar to the sample curve I talked about at the very beginning. So your inverse variation models are identified by one value increasing as the other one decreases, and vice versa. So your standard model is y equals k over x. And all you have to do is plug in the point uh, that you're given, the values that you're given for x and y, to solve for k, or substitute in k, if, you know, if that's what you're given, to find your x and y points.